Have you read the AI 2027 scenario? The one that's got everyone from government officials to tech leaders freaking out. This supposed research backed forecast claims that we're all gonna be replaced by AI agents in just three years, turned into bioengineered human-like creatures sitting in office environments by 2035. So what if I told you this entire scenario is built on science fiction rather than science? What if the biggest threat to AI progress isn't rogue super intelligence, but fear mongering that's actually speeding up the very arms race it claims to want to stop? And what if instead of preparing for digital doomsday, we should be learning to work with AI to solve the real problems. So what I'm really gonna show you here is this is actually a sales piece by a bunch of open AI guys. And I'm gonna break down today for you why AI 2027 gets absolutely everything wrong and what we should actually be focusing on instead. Let's dive in. Welcome to Startup Pack. I'm Spencer, and here at Startup Pack, we love to train software developers as well as build custom software solutions for companies. As an executive, uh, as a fractional CTO with over a decade of executive leadership and 25 years in software development, I've mastered transforming tech teams and products. All right, so AI 2027 scenario has been making waves across tech, uh, tech and government circles. Former OpenAI researchers and his team painted a vivid picture of AI doom that reads more like a Michael Crichton thriller than a serious forecast. But here's the problem. This this kind of fear mongering is exactly what's driving the harmful race dynamics and ultimately a whole bunch of hype that they claim that they want to oppose. Now, the AI 2027 scenario starts with a bold claim that, quote, superhuman AI over the next decade will exceed the industrial revolution, but provide zero evidence to support this assertion. So Gary Marcus points out that they don't give any references, metrics, or studies on productivity. It's just pure speculation dressed up with fancy graphs and citations. And I'm going to dive into it here in just a second for you. The scenario describes five AI agents, agent one through Agent 5, getting progressively more powerful, but never explains the actual mechanisms by which these systems would be built. And this is where the science fiction comes in. Instead of technical roadmaps, we get literary devices like three huge data centers full of Agent 2, copied work by day and night, turning out synthetic training data. We all know that AI can't turn out synthetic training data. It's called model collapse. So that wouldn't even work anyways. But when pressed on specifics, the authors resorted to vague concepts of neural release recurrence and iterated distillation, like all these big AI theory words that aren't even actually a real thing because LLMs aren't even real AI anyways. So the whole thing reads like a Netflix series uh, pitch to try to scare everybody that OpenAI is the big Big bad wolf, which I actually think opening eye is the big bad wolf, but so I can agree with him there. But really, at the end of the day, it's a whole bunch of fear mongering. So let's go take a look at over here really quick and take a look at this. So I'm gonna have to shift path my head because uh, as this goes, uh, let me just jump over and get get rid of my uh, my head here for a second. All right. So what we've got here is they start talking and they start telling this story. And as you'll notice, this graph over here on the right, right, it shows this, you know, so midsummer 2025 stumbling agents. Right. Um, and originally this was originally published in April. I've kind of put this off because I actually really despise this art, whole article, but I'm going to address it here. Late 2025, the world's most expensive AI open brain is built by the biggest data center the world's ever seen. Well, actually this is kind of just called Grok 4 that just released, you know, last week. And this is the most expensive AI that's ever been 200,000 H 100s. So I don't know if this is a dig at, 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 uh, at them, but this becomes the agent one. Now, supposedly this is like some amount larger than GPT-4. One of the very first problems with our assumption here is that there's nobody that's jumping this far, right? GPT-3 was this big and four was this big and one is this big. This would be massive cost comparative, right? I mean, this would be cost of like the entire GDP of the whole world at this point. So that's one of the first premises that they missed. Now, after being trained on predicting, the model is trained to produce text in response to instructions. This da -da -da, and it goes on to talk about how this basically starts to actually generate data. Now, again, there's their next missed premise because every, when AI starts to generate data, it's literally eating its own eating its own vomit. There's no uh, there's no like nutrition in this, right? It's not actually viable, and so it starts to to discuss that. And this is where early twenty six coding automation, right? And this is where we're saying it can generate its own code to start teaching itself. Well, that also wouldn't work because AI can't invent things, right? Would even Elon Musk, who right now, by the way is this one it is the world's most expensive recently said that it has no new invention yet right he wants to get to that but he said we're not anywhere near there so now mid 2026 china wakes up 
oh no, now we start to feel China, right? This is the deep seek um, threat that everybody was so worried about that China was going to be able to come beat us. And yet the deep seek models have yet to really make a large dent in it. Uh, late 2026, AI takes some jobs, right? Now this becomes an interesting thing because again, this is where the fear mongering really starts. And part of the reason I don't love this fear mongering about AI is going to take everybody's jobs is because this just allows executives to just beat people over the head and say, AI is going to steal everybody's jobs. You guys better work harder, right? Now, one of the things that Sachin Adala talked about is he said that we don't really, he doesn't really see any actual impact until we see the GDP move. So in this place, we can see them start to talk about this and start to agree with this because they're actually saying some key metrics is that the GDP actually starts to move, okay? Now, January 2027, Agent 2 never finishes learning. Okay, well, that literally doesn't even make sense, right? Like that's that's literal science fiction at that point. With, with new capabilities come new dangers. The safety team finds that if Agent 2 somehow escaped from the company and wants to survive and replicate autonomously, it might be able to do so. Look, you can turn it off. <laughs> like, I just, I don't buy that. Now, China steals it because evil China is going to want to take over the world too, right? This almost sounds like the nuclear... Um, the nuclear arms race that we, you know, that was the cold wars of the 1980s. Now, again, I'm not like a huge fan of us handing over a lot of stuff to China here, but like, ultimately, I don't think that's going to be a real thing. Now, March was an algorithmic breakthrough, right? Three huge data centers full of agent two copies work day and night churning out synthetic data. The fact that it's synthetic training data is called model collapse. This will never produce good data. So right in there, they already are missing it. Alignment for Agent 3, because now their safety team try to align with Agent 3. Since Agent 3 will be kept in-house for foreseeable future, there's a less emphasis on the usual defense against human misuse. Instead, team wants to make sure that it doesn't develop misaligned goals. Researchers don't have the ability to directly set the goals of any of their AIs. Like right now, this is called system prompts. So until we go away from system prompts, I'm not super worried about it. Now, after months of testing Agent 3, strengths and weakness grows clearer. It opens, passes their, you know, honesty test, etc. Now it comes into the national security. Now we just have Terminator type models where everything starts to fall. The Cold World word type era, the geopolitical super intelligence, right? We're just now into Skynet and a whole bunch of other fear mongering at this point. So I, I think I already kind of debunked a whole bunch of this, but let's kind of break down a little bit more. So remember when we were promised full self-driving cars in 2017 at the end of the year by Elon Musk? Now, again, I'm actually a huge Tesla fan. Love my FSD. It drove me all over the place today. But at the same time, when we were promised that hallucinations were going to be solved in months back in 2023 by OpenAI, right? So it's not just Elon's making these, right? In AI 2027, the timelines assumes massive breakthroughs happening every six months. But the history of AI is actually littered with a lot of broken promises and missed timelines that actually take a lot longer than you thought. Gary Marcus actually calculated if they assign even a 5% probability to each of the eight critical assumptions in their scenario, the total prob probability drops to essentially zero, okay? So like this becomes a huge non-profit probability. Now they claim reliable AI research agents will exist by late 2025, but that's basically tomorrow in development time. And yet we still can't even get agents to look reliable. Check out Grok 4, which has actually been released since then. And even Elon Musk says it still lacks common sense, right? So Ernest Davis notes that the scenario casually predicts AIs with PhD level knowledge of every field by the end of 2025. Now, Grok says that they came out with PhD level knowledge of every field, but it's still lacking common sense, right? So sometimes this is missing the forest through the trees on real AI progress. While AI 2027 fantasizes about AI agent four taking over the world, real AI researchers are solving actual problems like protein folding, drug discovery, and climate modeling. I want to see it come up with a real physics engine, right? If, if they could get an LLM that could actually train on a real physics engine, that would actually be something su super useful, right? Uh, Vitalik Buterin argues that the scenario assumes only one side gets AI superpowers while everyone else stays static. But that's not how technology diffusion works, right? We're seeing genuine progress in areas like code generation, scientific research assistance, and process automation that actually helps humans be more productive. So instead of preparing for fictional super intelligence, we should be investing in AI literacy, teaching people how to use it, being responsible deployment so that, you know, things like echo leak and super base MCP errors that I've talked about, you know, in my last videos, which make sure you like and subscribe 
aren't happening. Now, if your company has systems that aren't connected, reach out to us because here at Startup Pack, our specialty is connecting systems to help your company work to maximum efficiency. Check out startuppack.com slash Spencer. So we talked about a lot of their gaps here. And I think ultimately this is a piece of science fiction more than it is actual science, right? And so I'm not, I'm definitely not a fan of AI 2027 and every actual analysis by real people who understand the, the industry um, say that this is total hogwash and more science fiction than science. So rather than worrying about, about fictional super intelligence, we should be investing in AI literacy programs. The real opportunity is in a human AI collaboration tools that augment rather than replace human capabilities across industries like healthcare, education, and scientific research. We need robust testing frameworks and safety standards for AI systems. International cooperation on AI governance could help ensure the benefits of AI are shared globally while minimizing risks and conflicts. We need to be building diverse interdisciplinary teams that include ethicists, social scientists, and domain experts alongside technolo technologists. And this is a crucible, crucial for responsible AI development. So instead of racing towards AGI, which I've talked a lot about before. Companies should focus on solving specific problems. And this is what we're seeing. With the bubble bursting, couple, companies are niching down. As they niche down, they're getting to specifics. A great example is Microsoft just released uh, a study showing that they've got a bunch of medical breakthroughs in their uh, um, AI research. Now, again, it's research, it's theoretical, and they aren't releasing it to the public because it's nowhere near safe or reliable enough. So we need to come up with valuable problem solving rather than a whole bunch of fear mongering. And I know everybody hates on me and tells me I'm an AI hater, but really I'm an AI realist. So I want to talk about that. And just, I, I love talking about AI and I love talking about technology because I like to build software for people and I like to help their companies work to maximum efficiency. So if you need help, check out startuppack.com slash Spencer. Now, uh, what do you think? Do you agree? Do you disagree? I'd love to have a great discussion. So make sure you leave a comment down below and make sure you like and subscribe here at Startup Pack. We'd love to build custom software for people. So check out startuppack.com slash Spencer and here's some great information about our services. Hi, I'm Spencer, a fractional CTO. With over a decade of executive leadership and 25 years in software development, I've transformed technology teams and products for businesses just like yours. As you are fractional CTO, you get the strategic guidance of a seasoned technology executive without the full-time commitment. Perfect for companies ready to leverage cutting edge technology without expanding headcount. My team at Startup Hack has already built advanced AI agents for small and medium businesses, automating complex workflows and delivering advanced ROI to human workflows. We specialize in creating custom software that connects your systems into a single coherent technology ecosystem. Our development approach focuses on tangible business outcomes. For one client, we developed AI powered workflows that cut days off of human processes. For another company, by connecting multiple systems, we reduce processing time to increase their ROI by over 75%. We don't don't just write code, we architect solutions that scale. Whether you need cloud system architecture, data integration between legacy systems, or custom AI agents that automate your unique business processes, my team delivers results that exceed your expectations. Having led technology for a lot of companies and launched seven successful brands of my own, I bring battle-tested expertise to your business challenges. Our specialty is turning technological complexity into business advantage. So if you're ready to harness the power of AI and custom software to drive your business forward, let's connect Together, we'll build technology that doesn't just solve today's problems, it positions you for tomorrow's opportunities. Technology leadership, decades of experience, AI powered. Reach out today and we can help you. Check out startuppack.com slash Spencer.